This is about Thomas Merton. I saw a TV show on PBS about Thomas Merton. It surprised me. I know they cover a lot of ground, but Thomas Merton? That was the first time I had heard his name mentioned in what must be over 20 years. Long ago, I read his most popular book, his autobiography, The Seven Story Mountain. I'm not going to go back and read it again. What I recall from the book, rightly or wrongly, was his profound sorrow over the death of his younger brother in the Second World War. He went down in a plane over the English Channel. Merton, a pacifist, would have refused to participate in the war. Merton is remembered, if he is remembered, and he is, at least by PBS, for his spiritual meditations, his mysticism, his interest in all religions, his poetry, and for his life in a Trappist monastery just outside of Bardstown, Kentucky, the Abbey of the Lady of Gethsemane. Though he lived under a vow of silence, Merton kept a journal and published many books. The Seven Story Mountain made him a recognizable figure all over the world. He led a private, contemplative life, but his writings were socially activist, advocating peace, equality, and racial harmony. Merton, known by his fellow monks as Father Louis, renounced the physical pleasures of life, though he was reportedly romantically involved with a nurse near the end of it, and it is said he was never able to completely purge his fondness for jazz. Bully for you, Father Louis. As I said, I haven't heard his name mentioned in many years, and I haven't thought about him either. I wondered if he is remembered in any meaningful way, other than on PBS, and in annual celebrations staged in various locations where he lived or taught. Despite the widespread recognition during his lifetime, as this monk who writes books, there was also a singing nun. I do not believe that if I stood on a street corner and took a casual survey that I would find many people, any people, who would know Thomas Merton. The man has passed, his shadow has passed, his influence, whatever that may have been, that too has passed. I checked to see if the Abbey of Gethsemane is still in operation. They say it is. They claim that 40 monks still live there, and the observation of silence is suggested, so they say. People may visit or schedule a more formal retreat. There is a gift store in which they sell produce from their 2,000-acre farm, cheese and fruitcake, as well as fudge. 2,000 acres seems like a lot of land for 40 monks. They list a number you can call to order the fudge. I don't see Thomas Merton making fudge. Merton died when he stepped out of a bathtub onto the cord of an electric fan. I don't think we have seen anyone like him since that time, 1968. And I wonder why. If someone like him came along now, I think there would be a huge and very receptive audience. This is such a vulgar and chaotic, high-tech and violent culture. No one controls it, and it springs leaks every day. I would think that if someone spoke up in a voice that had no political affiliation and no commercial connection, not even fudge, but only a spiritual note, endorsing the virtues of peace and quiet, I think that voice might be heard. And if that voice was coming from a cloistered life that would give it both a validity and a strange, powerful allure, maybe. Or maybe not. Despite our rampant, ferocious materialism, I do think that people feel we have some kind of spiritual life, maybe a soul, maybe just a fuzzy moral impulse. And I think that such a voice would speak to those people and nourish their hunger for the spirit. But there is no such voice, none that I know. There was a monastery in my city, and the building remains as a business, repurposed, as they say, and the monks are long gone. Perhaps a few remain, somewhere, praying and making fudge. <laughs>